Okay, let's get started then. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. My name is Natasha Rexton, and it's my pleasure to uh, lead the admissions team at Prague City University. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you're watching this from around the world to learn more about the student experience that you could receive if you become a student of PCU. I'm delighted today to be joined by a couple of my colleagues from the student services team and a couple of our students as well, who I'm going to briefly hand over uh, to introduce themselves so you know who you'll be hearing from here today. And then I'll briefly explain to you how the rest of the event will uh, follow and the topics that we'll be covering. And if you have any questions as we go, uh, please feel free if you're watching this on Zoom to use the Q&A or the chat function. And if you're following this live on Facebook, then please feel free to drop your questions there. And we'll make sure that we get to you over the course of the presentation. So at this point, I'd like to introduce uh, my colleagues. So over to you. Hello, my name is Nelly Pontes and I am the Director of Student Services. Welcome to this webinar. Thank you for joining us and we'll be happy to walk you through some of the services and support system that we offer at Park City University. So enjoy it. Hello everyone, my name is Philip Lovinkrans and I'm a member of the Student Services team and I also coordinate our health and well-being activities and uh, the uh, annual team initiative. I'll be happy to talk about it a bit later. Okay, hello everyone. I am Stanya. I live in the Czech Republic and I am currently a second year student at Prague City University and I study graphic design. So I'll be very happy to share my experiences um, when studying at the school. Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Rudy. I'm an international finance and business accounting third year student and uh, love to share my experience with you. Thank you, everybody. So that's uh, the team that you'll be hearing from here today. Um, I am going to very briefly give you an introduction to our university so that you can uh, learn a little bit more about us, but really the main thing that you'll be hearing from us about today is the student experience. So uh, particularly if you are maybe going to be moving to Prague, either from another city in the Czech Republic or a different country, uh, as many of our students choose to do, we'll be explaining to you why students feel that Prague is a great city for them, the support that the team, uh, Nelly, Philip and our colleague uh, Rai offer, to help you settle in and also throughout your studies and then of course we'll be letting you know um, where you can get further information from us and um, how to apply uh, if there's time at the end and we'll be answering your questions so just very briefly I want to uh, introduce you to the university and who we are. Uh, if you're here today, then hopefully you already know a little bit about us, but we are a very international university with students coming from all over the world, as I just mentioned. All our programs are being taught in English and we're offering uh, British degrees and diplomas as well as some Czech degrees as well. If you haven't yet chosen your uh, program that you might be interested in or you want further details about the programs, today we're just going to be introducing you what we offer. But if you have specific questions or you would like help regarding what's going to be the best option for you, then please get in touch with your admissions advisor or contact us on admissions at Park City University. CZ, and we will be very, very happy uh, to help and assist you with that. But overall today, like I mentioned, you'll be hearing more about the experience and hearing about how the learning really enables you to go on to your uh, future careers or academic um, goals that you're wanting to reach. And you'll hear how we have um, quite a practical approach both to learning, but also to your student journey and different initiatives that you can get involved with when you're a current student. So we're offering, uh, it's quite a personal community with small class sizes. So you'll hopefully hear from the students and get some insight as we talk about the student experience um, that the nature of our university, it's quite community-based. Um, you know, we don't have big lecture halls or anything like this. People tend to know each other, say hi in the corridors and this kind of friendly atmosphere uh, that you'll hear about a bit more as we go through. 
So as I mentioned today, we're not going to be spending too much time talking about the programs that we do offer. But as a reminder, we have students studying across four different schools. So the School of Art and Design, which is represented today by Stanya on the Graphic Design Program. Uh, but we also offer a, a Fine Art Experimental Media Bachelor's degree, a one year foundation uh, diploma program, as well as two master's degrees as well. Uh, the second school is School of Business, which Aralyn is representing today on our uh, Bachelor's in International Finance and Business Accounting program. We also offer um, a Bachelor's in International Management, again, a couple of master's programs, as you can see there, as well as some professional qualifications as well, and a one-year foundation diploma. So if you have questions about any of those, please do get in touch. Our third school is the School of Media and IT. Uh, we offer again two bachelor's degrees, one in computing, one in creative media production. And again, you can see there that we offer the master's in computing. And then finally, our fourth school is a school of education. And it's within this school which we are offering our uh, Czech uh, accredited degree, uh, which is specialized education in teaching English as a foreign language. And we're also offering a professional qualification for those who already have higher level education uh, at the master's degree level and are looking to actually speak specifically, uh, to teach specifically in um, Czech secondary schools, as you can see there. So that's a very, very fast run through of the programs that we offer. The first three schools uh, we're offering the British degree programs and in the School of Education that you can see on the screen is where we're offering our Czech programs. So if you do have questions or need help, uh, determining your program choice, get in touch with the admissions team and we will be happy to help. But at this point, I'd really like to move on to the main focus of today, which is talking about the student experience both in Prague and specifically at Prague City University. So first and foremost, with the uh, input from Aralan and Stanya, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, why some of our students choose uh, to study to Prague. So maybe first and foremost, I can actually hand over uh, to you, Aralan and Stanya, maybe you can give a little bit of insight into what made you choose uh, Prague as, as, as the destination for you and PCU. Okay, so as a Czech person, I chose Prague, or I mean this university in particular, because I saw it as a great opportunity to get a British degree in my own country in a way. And also, I mean, on top of that, Prague is a very beautiful city, very historical. So if you are like me and you want to study some creative program, let it be graphic design, let it be fine art or just anything, it can also be very inspirational and you have a lot of opportunities um, to go into different galleries and museums. So yeah, the experience is like very, um, very good. And apart from that, I think that Prague is a very safe city. And I didn't quite realize this as a Czech person before because I grew up here. But a lot of people and a lot of my friends who lived in different cities in different parts of the world say that. Um, so like, especially when you're a girl and you need to, you know, walk alone in the evening or use the metro in the evening, you don't have to be scared. And even like little kids, um, use the metro by themselves alone, which can be a little surprising at first um, for like if you're, you know, if you're first time in Prague. But yeah, it's overall a very, um, very safe city and very beautiful. Um, I think my reasons were very similar to Stanya's reasons. It was definitely safety. I think that's one of them. Um, I grew up in one of the most dangerous cities in the world, which is Johannesburg. And so Prague is super safe. Um, it was also cost of living. I knew I wanted to study in Europe and I needed to find somewhere that was affordable and that wasn't really going to break the bank. And then, you know, I was researching and I said, oh, my God, look at Prague. It's such an amazing city. And um, that's why I chose it. Thank you both. Yeah, and I think just um, maybe Nelly and Philip, you've got insight from some of them, the students, you know, that you that you work with on a daily basis. But certainly, um, it, in my case, I'm I'm from the UK originally, and I also moved to Prague um, around five years ago. And something that really motivated me was the ability um, to travel and the accessibility. Obviously, uh, Britain is an island, and uh, you can't really get very far unless you're willing to to fly. So having on your doorstep um, 
being able to visit capital cities like Vienna, like Berlin, uh, Munich, you know, you can really just explore so much more than potentially uh, you would expect if you go to other European cities because it's so expensive, it's so accessible and it's also very um, affordable to do so as Aralan mentioned, both actually within living within the city itself, but also to have access to the um, uh, to the surrounding countries as well, to be able to exploit what they have to offer by way of culture, uh, by way of exhibitions and galleries, as you can see there, uh, and just different opportunities, I think, to, to learn Europe's such a diverse um, place, and you can get to explore it and get to know it really well. Uh, if you choose to do so as part of your, your weekends, for example, and so on. So this is another reason I think why uh, uh, students are attracted to Prague as a, as a city and to the Czech Republic as a destination. And so perhaps so moving on to actually the, the move to Prague, um, you know, as I said at the start, many of our students are perhaps coming here for the first time uh, when they're choosing to study. We have many students who are already uh, living in Prague or other cities in the Czech Republic, but maybe have been brought up or educated for their uh, high school, for example, or their bachelor's degree in another country, uh, or perhaps they're Czech and they're returning to Prague to continue their studies. Uh, we have a very diverse student body, both um, in terms of where they are from, but also, as you heard, we have bachelor's and master's programs. So we have people who come to studies uh, for the first time at 18 on their first uh, bachelor's degree, for example. We have working professionals who are returning to study uh, after some years and would like to kind of further their qualifications and take their career in a new direction, for example. So we're really working with a whole uh, diverse nature of students. So the move to Prague can be driven by different reasons, depending on the student situation. But of course, some of what we all experience uh, as, as people who come to a new place, you know, it's a, it's a big transition, it, it, it's a big move. So we want to make sure that um, you're prepared for that for our students who arrive and uh, shortly I'll be handing over to, uh, to, to Nelly and Philip to, uh, to, to talk a little bit more about how at PCU we help you to make sure that this transition is quite smooth. Um, but I just wonder if perhaps, again, uh, Stanley and Aralan, there's, there's anything that you really noted when you first moved or something that surprised you or something you wish you'd knew beforehand? Like, Stanley, I think even from your perspective, you mentioned it just then that, you know, you were surprised at, only by meeting people from other places did you realize perhaps uh, certain things which were, um, you know, specific to the Czech Republic or, or to Prague that you didn't know, for example, about the perspective on, on safety. Um, so yeah, is, is there anything that you two felt when you were preparing to move or that you were concerned around or uh, how you dealt with it when you got here that you can maybe share with us? Okay, so I'm Czech. So like, it wasn't such a big shock for me to move here. But what I really want to mention is the public transport, like it is overall very simple and easy in general, but still like when you're not used to it, you might get, you know, confused or lost at times. And I just want even like the international the students to know that it's okay to feel lost, especially in the beginning. And to know that even Czech people get lost sometimes. So like, don't be afraid to ask um, anyone, honestly, because a lot of people in Prague actually speak English, especially the young people. And yeah, so yeah, even Czech people get lost for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't, couldn't agree more with that, actually. I never used uh, public transportation like that ever. And so when I got there, I was very, very shocked. And I was like, am I going to get mugged on the train? Is something going to happen? And, you know, little did I realize it was super, super safe. Um, I think the culture shock was big for me because I grew up in Africa and then suddenly to move to Europe, everything was, everything was different, right? The taste of the milk, the taste of the flour, um, the taste of the food, essentially, because European diet, funnily enough, doesn't have a lot of sodium. Uh, African diets have a lot more sodium. So I had to adjust to all of those things. Um, I think it's certainly easy. I think you have to be adaptable as a new student and you have to just overcome it, you know, as much as you might not like it. And you also need to remember Prague is one of the most international cities in the world. So, you know, if you're missing home food 
odds are you're going to find a restaurant in Prague that makes your traditional food. I mean, I went and found one in the square. So, um, you know, I think you can overcome those things. Yeah, and I, I think you've both touched on a couple of interesting points, which is that um, everyone who comes here, they're going through uh, the the same thing at the same time, right? Quite often, you know, you might have slightly different experiences or slightly different things that concern you or worries, but ultimately, if you're making any sort of move, there'll be different things that you have to um, adapt to. And I guess, um, you know, a really key message there that you both shared is that yeah, you're not going to be alone in doing that. And you'll typically find ways uh, to either make you feel at home, uh, to help you settle in, whether that's finding the taste of a where is home to you in your case, Aralan, or indeed whether that's kind of, um, you know, learning new things that help you to adapt and feel at home in, in the new environment, which perhaps leads me on um, nicely to uh, invite Nelly and Philip at this point to uh, share a little bit more around actually how we try to uh, assist uh, students when they're joining the university. Yeah, so I actually want to start by um, sharing a little bit of my own experience because I used to be um, a student at Prague College at the time. Um, I moved to Prague in 2005 so it's like been a very long time and uh but yeah i was a student i didn't know czech language and i arrived so i'm originally from belarus so for me the cultural shock was i would say definitely not as big as for arulan and actually one of the reasons i chose prague at the time as a place of study was because culturally um, it's somewhat similar to Czech Republic, somewhat similar to Belarus, um, and it's not that far away from home, which was um, satisfying for my parents. And to be honest, I completely remember the first day when I arrived, it was by train at 5 a.m. in Hlavni Nadraji, which is a main railway station, and <laughs> it was kind of like dark, <laughs> and I was there alone, and um, coming from my country, um, I was kind of yeah uneasy there standing and then realizing that it's actually quite, you know, safe and people were helping me around to get the ticket to go through the to metro down, so which happened to be just downstairs at the metro station, which shocked me as well. So I definitely compliment the transport system here. And uh, I think, you know, it's the easiest and most comprehensive and um, safe and fast system, transport system in the world. So yeah, um, but still, of course, when I was coming over and when our students are arriving, obviously there are challenges there. And um, we are trying at student services, we're trying to kind of learn or imagine what students are going through when they are coming over or actually even before they actually came to the Czech Republic, but they're starting to get ready. So what are the things that students need to know, need to understand, need to learn about the, the new place of, um, of stay for the next maybe three or four years? So um, at student services, we start welcoming students um, quite early before semester start and uh, we basically start sending information um, about Prague, about the university, about university's community, about the activities that we offer. We're trying to give as much information as possible for the students to feel already, you know, two months before the semester started to, to start getting this connection, getting link, getting, um, getting to know the university better. So we start by sending those emails, trying to communicate, asking questions, uh, encouraging students to interact with us, um, and so on. And then we, one week before semester start, we organize different type of activities, which we call welcome week. 
um, and we have a range of activities really uh, starting by um, starting with um, having orientation for students, showing them, introducing them to the university, to the different departments, our colleagues, and then uh, introducing to the surroundings, surroundings, like what's around the university, what are all our locations, how to get from one to another and uh, stuff like that. Uh, we offer also um, academic inductions. Well, that's typically offered by program leaders or by academic, by, by academic schools at the university, but we're helping to organize those so that the new students, newcomers know, uh, get deeper knowledge of the program, the schedule, the structure, what will be their first day, first week, and the whole semester, how it will look like. Um, we also offer different smaller events, like, uh, for instance, we introduce Czech language to the new students. So we have um, our um, teacher, a Czech lecturer, giving an introductory class for the students just to kind of, you know, get them to know what Ahoy means and um, uh, how to maybe buy bread in the shop and stuff like that. So also we um, uh, sometimes organize external events for students during that week. So we take them, for instance, to for a Prague tour uh, or to the Prague Zoo, which is uh, an amazing place to go to. Um, or for instance, there was an architect, um, um, the the walk that with one of our colleagues, ex colleagues, who is was showing Prague around historical Prague and um, um, supporting by different interesting uh, historical uh, information. So we also, yeah. So that happens during the welcome week. So we also in, have an event, I'm sorry, I forgot to say, uh, before students arrive for Welcome Week, we offer an opportunity for parents of the students to get in contact with us and ask their questions because we understand that how stressful it might be to send um, a kid to, uh, to Prague, you know, it can be very far away from home. So we are offering advice or, you know, we're answering questions. And then when the semester starts, we kind of end our welcome activities by offering a welcome party, uh, which is uh, very popular, not only among new students, but our current students also attending that event and this way kind of uh, getting to know new students better. I would say as a maybe last thing, just want to add the idea behind creating those events behind um, starting early communication with the students and then having all those points of interaction during the welcome week is for to create is for us to create an environment where new students will be able to find friends because obviously we understand that coming to a foreign country and being away from the family, away from their friends, kind of out of their comfort zone, that can be very hard on, on young people. And that's why we kind of believe that as soon as they find friends, they find good support and a good background for them to kind of overcome all the challenges that are coming in the, in the academic path. So I think that's um, maybe it. For now, from me, Philip, would you like to add something? I think you mentioned all the important parts. And uh, one thing on my mind is uh, the body system, which we introduced uh, recently to really help the new students connect with the, the current students so that they can share the experience, that they have someone who can guide them, uh, support them at the beginnings. Uh, I know Stanya did participate in this uh, as a body. Would you like to share your experience at this point? Yeah, of course. So I've been part of the body system since the beginning, basically. And the way it works is that the current students volunteer to be a buddy to the to a new student or to a couple of them. And the new students choose their body based on this little like description um, where they're like hobbies of the body and everything. So like they kind of match together. And then 
I think it's a very good opportunity for the new students because even from my own experience, like I, my buddy was a girl who came from Thailand back then and I got to show her like all around Prague. I helped her get, get a new phone number. I helped her with the public transport to get the card and everything. And I think, I think she, like it was very helpful to her. So like definitely if, um, I mean, I think every every I think every new student gets uh, like an email to join. So I would definitely recommend joining. Even like you know, even if you're coming to Prague for the first time, or you don't know anyone here, or just you know, or you just want to meet a new friend, like it's a great opportunity, and I would definitely recommend joining. Thank you, Lily insight on that and actually you just touched on something too that came to my mind which is things like um helping to um get a mobile phone number or the transport card and things and uh, these are things that obviously most students have to go through when they when they arrive or a bank account for example and these are things like stanya said either through the buddy system or through uh, nelly and philip that help is there to make sure that your move uh, and transition to prague uh, goes well for you basically and I think it's fair to say uh, as you're going to hear now that that um, support doesn't end basically once you arrive and um, of course it's very important to us that in those you know initial stages and when you've just moved to Prague from wherever that might be or even if you're based here you know starting at a new university on a new experience um, you still want to settle in and make friends and make sure that you're experience is going to be as positive as as it can be so we want to make sure that that uh, initial grade start continues throughout uh, your studies with us and once again Nelly and Philip uh, and our colleague Rai who you see in the photo there are on hand to help so I think uh, I'll, I'll hand back over to you two if I can please of course I'll be happy to introduce this part a bit and uh, following the latest research and also the best practice across the universities across the world. We know that the physical well-being, the mental well-being, the emotional well-being, they are so all connected and uh, crucial for the study success and just uh, being happy in life. So that's why we try to offer several opportunities for our students really to care for their bodies and minds and uh, find additional support. The foundation of this is that we are study advisors, we are a team and uh, there's one study advisor for each school and we are always here available for our students, they can reach out basically with any kind of trouble and either we can help or we direct them to, to the right place and students can come if they have questions about their study paths, which program to take next or about the, their career paths. Uh, any kind of trouble during their studies, but also outside of studies and they can help and uh, guide them. There's, there's also administrative support uh, that we can provide. Uh, another uh, part of this pillar is uh, the meditation and yoga. Uh, all students can join these sessions regularly or just uh, pop in and see, see how it is for them. Uh, yoga is led by Nelly, she's a qualified yoga instructor, and sometimes people join the sessions at the beginning a bit of uh, tired, but uh, at the end people leave the session energized and centered and they say, oh, I didn't know I had this muscle and I had no idea I could do this pose. So it's really something to, that really energizes the body and <laughs> just balances uh, the study time. And uh, I, I guide the meditation sessions. I'm also a qualified meditation instructor. And it's something that people can do to nourish, nourish their mind and just have a time to settle. So the body needs the movement and the mind, mind needs the stillness. So it can help the students to, to concentrate and uh, stay focused on whatever they want to, to be focused on. Also, students during their studies, either at the beginning or just in general, there's, there can be some obstacles coming up. It can be loneliness at the beginning or uh, issues in the relationship or depression, anxiety, eating disorders. There's this issue that uh, can arise and student doesn't know uh, how to get help, how to support himself. So for this pur purpose, we have this external cooperation with a partner called uh, City Practice. 
and they have a team of counselors that are available for free to our students and the service is anonymous any student can reach out uh, to counselor and often just one session helps uh, talk about the issues and they're supported and they know how to move forward so that's uh, something we are really proud of uh, that we can offer this uh, to our students to have the support uh, and additionally we constantly come up with, with uh, new things uh, to be available for the students uh, so not one for the semester will be a free coaching sessions which is quite good for situations when a student uh, is unclear about something and wants to clarify things in his mind so there will be a coach support uh, to be clear on the goals and on how to get there uh, also something our students report quite often is uh, issues like procrastination it means like delaying things which are really important to you but doing something which is uh, enjoyable or very easy so we try to support uh, the students to overcome this and we plan to offer some workshops to uh, make sure that the students can uh, stay on track or what they want to do so these are the, the basics uh, and we are also always offer for suggestions and open to working with students on uh, the topics that they prefer so perhaps i can uh, continue with a few more things international the international students who come to the czech republic on the study visas on the visas so we help them to uh, apply for long-term residency and to extend it then. So whatever is required from the Ministry of Interior, we are typically uh, knowledgeable of those things and we uh, help students to, you know, just to avoid any kind of problems and to extend their stay, legal stay in the Czech Republic in timely manner. And uh, one more thing is student societies. Um, we have um, different clubs, societies for students based on their interest. And typically it's this kind of fluid thing, you know, like as students uh, graduate and they leave, then new ones come, uh, new interests, they have, they have new interests. So new societies appear. Currently, the most active uh, student societies are the music society. It's been very successful for already over a year uh, and uh, uh, clay society. So they do amazing things with uh, clay. Um, but in the past, we had such societies, football, for instance, we had, we used to have a team at the time for our college football team and we're playing with different universities, competing with them. Um, we also had photography society uh, art society and uh, also running like it's really it's like a range of things it's as i say basically based on the interest of the those active students who are like you know coming to us and saying okay i want this society so what we say find few more students with the same interest and let's open the society we'll support you with that so yeah that's kind of what I wanted to add to this. Um, Dasha, thank back to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you, Philip, for going into that. And I think um, just on the note of uh, societies, this is another way in which you can uh, be involved and meet, meet students from across um, from across the schools and from across different programs. And uh, we're going to kind of switch the, the focus a little bit now, uh, just to touch upon uh, accommodation and then uh, talk a little bit as well around some of the uh, the other kind of student life um, events as part of the uh, university and also some of the activities that can further support your studies but I think what's um, just just as sort of I'm listening and, and, and hearing everybody speak I think what's important for you to know is that there's so much that's on offer both through the university uh, and the team and other students are there to support you with that and then also through um, the city of Prague and obviously as I mentioned an important part of that is where you're going to be living so we want to make sure um, that everybody is in an environment where they are uh, comfortable and they're settled so we work with a number of student residences 
uh, across the city. There are a number that you can find. Um, and then some students also choose to find their own accommodation. If you would be joining us from a country where you do require a visa to study, we do typically recommend that you at least start your stay in one of the student residences across Prague so that you can make sure that you can uh, get the paperwork that you need in order to apply for your visa. And also typically students prefer it because most students in that situation uh, are coming to Prague for the first time at least to live, even if they've been before to visit or on holiday, for example. So usually it's a really good way um, for you to be able to meet other students. Um, the ones that you can see on the screen there, there's normally a large number of students from our university uh, staying there. Typically students are staying in twin rooms. Uh, in the first instance, you can see that in euros, prices are ranging from between 350 to 450, uh, depending on where you're staying. Uh, for single rooms, there's typically less availability and the prices are obviously that little bit higher. Uh, but if you uh, look early for your accommodation, then uh, you should be able to secure um, a, a single a single room. And there is indeed a new residence called the Fizz that's opened up that's offering a few more. And at Zytrum, they have a number of locations across Prague. They also offer some single rooms. So um, you can indicate to us at the time of applying if you would like to stay in the student accommodation and we can let you know where there's places available uh, or at least direct you to where you can go and book the accommodation and you can choose to either uh, reserve a place through us uh, if there's still availability or you can uh, find your own which many of our uh, European students or students who are maybe moving from within the Czech Republic choose to do and if I'm not mistaken Stanya, I, I think that's what you two chose to do when you moved is that correct that you uh, decided to find your own accommodation yeah that's what i decided to do and i also would like to like give an advice about that so if you don't want to like live in the student house or just maybe like live for a few months in there and then find something of your own i would definitely recommend adding yourself to these facebook groups it's either called like flat chair or apartment chair you can definitely find a good like affordable place in there and I would also recommend adding yourself um, in there pretty early so you can like have a look at what everybody is posting and search for something that like where you would like to live, like what would work best for you. So yeah, Facebook group, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, thank you. It's a, it, it's a good tip and it is also one, um, if you contact us in the admissions team, we will send you the links to the accommodation providers that you can see on the uh, on the screen here. Um, there's a platform called Student Room Flat where you can also put in your budget and you can uh, find options there. Or indeed, uh, there are a lot of uh, Facebook groups, particularly for students, because obviously there's classic time of year where people move out and people are looking for new flatmates and so on. Um, but it is quite uh, a popular option to stay in the student residence, at least for the first semester. Uh, and as I say, particularly if you're going to require a visa to study, we recommend that option. But then after uh, a few months or your first year, you know, normally people uh, do either find a flat share or perhaps go with a group of friends to, to, uh, to find their own accommodation. But um, something that you, you saw previously was that uh, if you do find your own contract for example but you don't speak czech there are uh, you know philip and, and nelly are czech speakers so uh, that contract can just be looked over for you uh, also just to make sure that you have an assurance that the place where you will be staying um you know that that, that contract is clear uh, and you understand what you're signing up for so that kind of assistance is is also there and um, so you have lots of support when you first arrive uh, to help you to move in and help you find something suitable and then if something comes up during your stay, you can also uh, speak with the team. So at this point, um, we'll just move on to cover a bit more around um, some of the student life and events. So we've talked a little bit about um, student societies, which uh, Nelly was just introducing a few moments ago. Um, there are a couple of other initiatives that are run um, throughout the university as well that can really contribute towards your uh, student experience. The, the first one I'd maybe like to mention would be the exhibitions and performances. You saw earlier on that we have a School of Art and Design and throughout the semesters and particularly 
uh, at the end of the spring semester, there are a number of exhibitions which are open to the public, but also open to other students. Um, and we really do try and encourage you to attend the other students and support their events as well uh, and get involved. And we mentioned, or I mentioned, I should say, around one of the things that drove me to move to Prague was about the opportunities to travel. And we do try and promote um, opportunities for you to do that, both in a social and an academic context too. So for example, there have been trips to the uh, Venice Biennale, there have been uh, trips to some of our uh, partner schools in Germany, for example, and we also want to encourage you to maybe take trips within the uh, country as well with, throughout the Czech Republic. If you if you aren't aware, um, it's really popular here for outdoor activities. So uh, hiking in the summer, kayaking, but also skiing in the winter. Um, it's very accessible for you. And I think the nature, it's certainly something that I didn't realize when I moved here, just how prevalent and how into the outdoors people were and actually just how accessible it is. So there's lots of things for you to explore um, both within Prague and beyond and then also throughout the university. So things like the exhibitions and performances you see there, of course there's loads of cultural activities throughout Prague. Something a lot of people don't know is there's actually a TV studios here. So uh, we have a creative media production program and just down the road, there's a major uh, filming and TV studio. So there's lots of different events that you can um, get involved with. So I just wanted to start off by mentioning those, um, but perhaps I can invite, uh, Philip, maybe you'd like to say a word about uh, the annual theme, for example, and we can uh, just give you a bit more background about some of the points here that you can uh, see on the screen and explain to you what those are. Sure. So the annual theme uh, is like a force that uh, the whole university gathers around during the one year. And uh, many projects are organized within classes, but also outside classes that students take part in. And some of them are online, especially in the COVID times. Uh, students organized an Instagram series to introduce different students uh, to the community, or students created uh, a calendar for, for the next year that has been used uh, throughout the university. And some of these students are live already now, but also in the pre-COVID times, where a group of students planted a tree just outside the university, or there was a clothes swap organized where people could bring their clothes, take some new ones, and what, uh, what was left was uh, given to a charity to promote their project, or some students gathered just to clean, clean a stream nearby, and there's just many opportunities, and there's space and support for anybody who's inspired to organize any project uh, related to the, to the topic of that year. Thanks, Philip. And um, maybe I can hand over to uh, to one of you to speak a little bit about the student council. Um, sure. Um, I'm currently the student council treasurer. And uh, what we do is we try and create events and opportunities for students to uh, not only be able to interact with each other, but events that are about enrichment, you know, like um, we've done Christmas parties, we've done Halloween parties, um, and we try and get involved with new students as well. So we have a part in Welcome Week, we have a part in societies. Um, student Council's main role also is to be like a group of mentors and people that will listen to you. And so if you're struggling with something, you can approach any member of the council and they will assist you and say, why don't you try this? Why don't you do this? And um, so that's what we do. We support and help you integrate. Thank you, Arlan. And I think one of the examples, um, just to sort of touch back a little bit to um, how Nelly was explaining that when students come or they have different interests or different needs, um, they can come at that from, from different approaches to the team. And one student who joined us uh, really wanted to see a, a student magazine uh, come to fruition and he drove that forward. And Stanya, I believe that you um, have some insight into the Agora magazine as well. And I can just quickly shop, stop this show and uh, perhaps share um, what the magazine looks like in case anybody listening would like a bit more info on that. 
Yeah, so I, I can talk about the Agora magazine because I was a part of it. Um, firstly, when it was established like one and a half years ago. And my role was first I worked with the graphic design team and then I kind of moved into managing social media for them. And I also wrote my own article. So there's like a lot of um, roles that you could do in there. But it's basically a magazine that kind of acts like a platform, I would say, for students to share their work. Um, so like, if you would like to, you know, have your art shared in there on Instagram, for example, or if you want to write an article, or even share a small illustration in the magazine, like there's a lot of ways that you can contribute. And what's great about this is if you contribute, or if you're part of the team, you can definitely put it in your resume or in your CV, and it looks like really good in there. So yeah, Agora magazine is definitely a good opportunity how to get involved. Also like to meet new people and like learn about new things and yeah, new experience. Yeah. Thanks, Danya. Yeah, and hope, hopefully you can see uh, or you've been able to see on my screen just going through and um, as you say, you can see how uh, professionally produced it is so absolutely being able to use uh, such opportunities as part of your CV it's a it's a great opportunity from both sides right from both the social side and the experience side but also um, to have a very practical uh, need and I think it's it's really nice at least from my side as somebody who who works at the university it's really nice actually to see such uh student driven uh projects you know we have a, an amazing student body who are capable of uh, wonderful things both academically but throughout the society as philip was just mentioning with the annual theme initiative and we're really trying to encourage all students to come together uh, to think about different issues, put forward different ideas, um, think innovatively. And I think the um, Agora magazine, you know, calling it a platform is 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 accurate. It's a, it's a great place for our students to come together and be able to to do that. So, yeah, thank you all uh, for your for your insights on that. And at this point, then I will just resume from here. Uh, so just be mindful uh, of the time. Uh, please, as I said, if you have any questions, do let us know and we'll uh, get to those and be happy to help. Uh, otherwise, we really just want to kind of cover to, to wrap up around our sort of student life and events. Uh, just to tell you about some of the additional initiatives that also complement your studies. So for example, we have a speaker series, which belongs to each school. But again, everything is actually open to all our student bodies. So uh, to the whole student body, sorry. So if you are particularly interested uh, in one of the events or something cultural that's happening in a different school, these events are open both to the public. So even if you're not a student with us yet, you are very welcome to join and see what we're talking about. Um, but all students are invited to this. And the idea is to have uh, a series of events which uh, complement or tap into something very current uh, that can link to your current studies to either offer inspiration for research projects, offer you uh, inspiration for future careers, or it might just be to actually support your studies and uh, think, hear from someone else's perspective how they uh, got into their uh, career path and what a networking opportunities for you to find out around other organizations, other people, um, and learn from people who are in the industries that you might be interested in. So uh, these happen typically every couple of weeks within the semester. So there's normally a, a quite a series of events happening. And like I said, they're open to the public and the entire student body. And then similarly, we have an initiative called PCU Learning Plus. Um, which is really around trying to enhance your student experience from the academic side to offer additional opportunities to uh, enrich your learning experience whilst you're with us at PCU. So um, uh, perhaps I can kick off just by introducing the Prague City Architecture course, which uh, Nelly mentioned. This is an elective course that's uh, for free alongside your studies taught by um, our colleague, Alex. 
who, as Nelly mentioned, has got a wealth of knowledge of uh, Prague history and architecture, and he'll share that with you. And this is a great way, I think, whether you're new to the city or local to Prague, students can uh, enrich their, their knowledge and sort of deepen their connection to uh, the city where they're living. So that's coming at it from this point of view. Um, but then there's also opportunities through LinkedIn Learning, which I believe, Arulan, you've used as part of your studies. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have. Um, I really like LinkedIn Learning because if you're not uh, if you're not a student and you're a professional, you actually have to pay for it. <laughs> and uh, what makes it really, really unique is that they're all short courses. Some of them are super long as well. But um, as you transition, let me say, from a first year to a second year to a third year, you need to start to differentiate yourself. You need to show that you're different. And so boosting up your resume is really the way to do it. And it also garners attention from the corporate world because LinkedIn learning is linked directly into your LinkedIn profile. And every time you complete a course, people can see it and you can share your certificates. And then what a lot of people don't know is that LinkedIn has a whole section of recruitment as well. There are people who actually pay premium LinkedIn fees to target specific qualifications on LinkedIn. And so now when you've taken a short course in let's say accounting and somebody's looking, um, the recruiters looking at profiles and they're looking for accountants, they'll find your profile. And so it's, it's so, so, so relevant. And the university was great because they didn't place any limitations. So you can really go and do a course in whatever, even if you're studying business, you can go and learn graphic design on LinkedIn if you had extra time, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Thank you um, for sharing your experience as, experiences of it. And um, I agree, as you're saying, in the job market currently, uh, the emphasis of what we'd like uh, all our students to be able to achieve on graduation, of course, is to have had a wonderful time in Prague, fallen in love with the city, you know, love their university, of course. But we appreciate that you're studying with us to advance your career prospects, uh, to start your futures. Uh, or indeed, like I said, if you're coming back to studies to progress your futures, maybe take into a different direction, enhance your career. So we believe that these additional extras and opportunities are uh, just as important for you to engage with. And depending on your program or your where you want to develop your skills, as Aralan said, the LinkedIn Learning gives you uh, a lot of scope actually to diversify your curriculum outside of your program and complement your studies with different training opportunities. And we have um, a student ambassador scheme where we have students who uh, work with us, for example, and uh, help us to talk to uh, other students about the university. And we can use LinkedIn Learning, for example, as a part of training initiatives and really to help you, like Aralan said, grow throughout your studies. So whether you're um, already at the master's level or you're just starting out in your higher education career, um, this is a tool which you can use to really cement your learning uh, and move forward and as you say Aralan, make sure that you stand out in the uh, job market too which connected to that um, is the career fair which we offer annually uh, this is where we invite our industry network partners um, both locally and globally to um, offer talks or CV workshops who, who are actively uh, hiring as well to give students tips into how they can make themselves as employable as possible, uh, network opportunities so that you can, upon graduation um, or even during your studies, perhaps find work or internship opportunities uh, and go on uh, to the career that you're looking for. And indeed, many of our students uh, do step into the jobs, their, their dream jobs, <laughs> thanks, to the, thanks to their studies with us. And of course, if you're looking to kind of go into further academic uh, you choose the route of academia, then, then this is possible as well. So at this point, we only have a few minutes left. Um, so to wrap up quite briefly, um, if you are interested in studying with us, as I mentioned at the beginning, the next step really would be to determine your program and then to apply. Uh, you can see on the screen here what's needed from you if you'd like to apply. Uh, please get in touch with us if you do have any questions about that and we'll be happy to help. And the next steps are really to choose your program, uh, apply to study with us, which can all be completed online. 
uh, successfully complete an interview with the program leader. That's a key part of all our programs. If you're successful, you'll receive an offer to study with us. And once you accept that, you can confirm your place with us. At that point, we would offer you the papers needed for a visa application, if that's applicable to you. Uh, and then once you have your visa, you would arrive in Prague. Now, we are for the September semester expecting to be running um, teaching on campus. Face-to-face -face teaching is already underway. Um, and the digital campus would only be used if necessary. And you can see that for more info, uh, you can join us on our website. So I'd like to make sure that we do address uh, any questions that, that comes that come through uh, to us. And I'd also really like to conclude by showing you uh, a short video just to summarize some of what we've spoken about um, regarding coming to Prague, starting your studies and so on. So if you have questions, please feel free to uh, put those in now. And in the meantime, I am going to share the video that I'd like to share with you uh, by way of just showing you a little bit of what Prague uh, has to offer. Prague is a cosmopolitan city with excellent business links and a long-standing history as a cultural hub that continues to the present day. Prague is also a vibrant university city with students coming here to study from around the world for over 650 years. You will enjoy unlimited artistic, cultural and entertainment opportunities. You can participate in a multitude of sports year-round or watch many of the world-class teams and individuals who live, train and compete here. And on the weekends and your holidays, you can use your base in Prague to travel and explore all of Europe. Business networking, cultural events, theatres, galleries, sports and so much more. Combined with your studies at Prague City University, you will have many opportunities to get practical experience in your field of studies and to start and develop your future career. You will also gain a unique perspective on the world that our outstanding international education offers. Prague City University, a British education in the heart of Europe for a global community. Okay, so that was just a short video by way of uh, summarizing um, some of what we've been talking about and just to show you a few nice shots of uh, Prague because as you've heard, it's a very beautiful, beautiful place uh, to both study and live. So at this point, I would really like to just say uh, thank you very much to Arulan, to Stanya, to Nelly, uh, and to Philip. And perhaps if you have any brief uh, closing remarks, invite you to, to make those now. Um, otherwise, I'd just like to say thank you also for joining us. Uh, it's been great to have you with us. We hope that you found uh, the event informative and you feel like you have more of an oversight or insight into both what uh, PCU offers, should you choose to study with us, uh, and what you can expect from your student experience. and really just a range of the activities. I, I, it's a cheesy thing to say, but if you come with an open mind and you want to be engaged with the university on, on any level in your community, the opportunities really are quite endless. As you've heard, we're quite open, uh, flexible. We want to accommodate students to achieve uh, what they want to within their, within their student experience. So we hope you've enjoyed it. If you have questions, please feel free to uh, write to us. I will just pull up our uh, email address here so you can see that. And perhaps, yeah, if there's any, any closing remarks, uh, please share now, Philip, Nelly, uh, Aral, and Stanya. Otherwise, I'd just like to say on, on uh, behalf of the admissions team, thank you all for your input today. Um, it's been very much uh, enjoyable to hear your insights. So thank you all. Yes, I would like to also thank all of you for joining and um, I think I will say even more cheesy thing but if you decide to um, to apply to Prague City University you will definitely end up in very good caring hands not only of student service department but the whole um, Prague City University community so um, thank you again and uh, we hope to see you among us.
just say the campus is open. So if anybody, um, uh, you know, if you are if you are local or you want to uh, have a have a call with a student or have a call with um, uh, somebody else um, to discuss either your admission personally or gain further insight, then we would be uh, very very happy to do so. Uh, so thanks once again for your attendance. Uh, please get in touch if there's anything else we can help you with. And uh, enjoy the rest of your evening from wherever you're watching this. Thanks once again. And thanks, Nelly, Philip, Stanya, and Arulan. Great to have you with us today.